Welcome to our Max ECU training part seven. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at setting up our advanced inputs. Advanced inputs are things above and beyond our basic sensor inputs that we covered in our last video. So these can be including things like fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, maybe we have a multi-position trim pot switch that we'd use for map switching. There's all kinds of things that we would wanna set up potentially for logging or for calibrating and tuning purposes. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the more common examples in this video and learning how to configure and set them up and test them to make sure they're actually dialed in properly before we use them for tuning or logging purposes. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at setting up advanced inputs into our Max ECU. Advanced inputs are things that we're not using in our basic sensor input configuration that we always have to have present. Those basic sensors are things like our map pressure, throttle position, lambda wideband air fuel, coolant temp, and intake air temp. We need all of those basic sensor inputs for the MAX to control our engine properly. Advanced inputs are things above and beyond this. So things like fuel pressure, oil pressure, exhaust pressure, coolant pressure, oil temperature, transmission temperature, trim pot switches, toggle switches, EGTs, and the list goes on and on. These are all gonna be common advanced inputs that we may wanna wire in so we have advanced logging capabilities so we can data log and keep, keep an eye on various channels that we normally wouldn't log otherwise or take a look at and or use those and repurpose them for some kind of uh, fuel or spark timing calibration tuning purposes or even using it for some kind of an output control. There's all kinds of reasons we might wanna have some of these advanced inputs. We're gonna go and take a look at setting them up here within this video, just some of the more common ones. Now there may be something I don't cover. If you find that I'm not covering something that you wanna set up on your Max ECU, you can post on the video comment section or on the private forum. I can definitely follow up and help you on there. Now let's take a look at setting up these advanced inputs. First thing we're gonna do is jump into our navigation pane here on the left side. We're gonna work our way down here into inputs. Now in here, we're gonna skip over trigger home, sensors, and lambda sensor. We covered those in a separate video. Now we have EGT sensors as something we haven't talked about. Let's dig into this real quick. Now my Max Pro ECU has eight available EGT inputs that I can utilize for all kinds of uh, programming or logging purposes. We can find here in our list, we have EGT1 through EGT8. Now these are preset inputs into my Max ECU, meaning they've been wired in already. Now if I don't have an eight cylinder engine, in this case I don't, I have a four cylinder engine for my race vehicle, I'm not gonna be using EGTs five, six, seven, and eight. In order to assign and work with our EGTs one, two, three, and four, if we have an EGT per cylinder on our uh, exhaust manifold, we're gonna go in here and click on EGT sensor. Now I'm gonna do that for each of these. So click on EGT sensor and then EGT sensor. Now we can find here that we have the option under sensor type to set it either under a type K or a type N. Now the type K is the most common type of thermocouple and that's probably what you're gonna be dealing with more than likely. I'm going to keep these all on my K type standard. Now this is going to now pair EGT input one with my cylinder number one, two to two, three to three, and four to four. If I choose to enact any kind of fuel or spark timing correction based on my EGT reading per this particular input and cylinder, it's gonna be able to know exactly what's going on with that because I've configured the details right here. Now I'm still left with EGT inputs five through eight on this particular box. That's gonna allow me to repurpose this input to be able to use it for some type of temperature measurement using a thermocouple. So for this case here, let's say I have EGT input five and I've used and I've set up my, my thermocouple as measuring my pre-intercooler temperature. We're gonna go here and set it up under user input. And then here I have to select the sensor type. Let's assume it's a K type still. And then under the name, I can call this pre-IC temp, it's pre intercooler temp. I've given it a name. Now I'm not gonna be using my other EGT inputs six through eight, so we're just gonna leave them blank for right now. What we can do next is take a look at our sensor filter. This is gonna allow us to filter the inputs coming in from our K type thermocouples. Generally speaking, air temp sensors or temp sensors like we would find in EGT sensor don't need any kind of filtering provided. So we're gonna make sure we keep it on none. If you do notice that we're getting erratic readings or signals coming out of the EGT sensor, you may need to use a filter here, but more than likely you are not going to need to filter the data coming in from any of these sensor inputs. The next portion here is our sanity or sensor air check. This is going to uh, go in and take a look at any kind of errors that could fault out or potentially fault out within our EGT operation. 
So if we have an EGT unplug, or maybe we have some kind of a wiring problem, or maybe an EGT starts to melt because it's getting too hot, it'll show an open circuit. And if we have this enable, that'll report that on our diagnostics list of possible errors that could be thrown. It'll tell us and prompt us up that there's something wrong. We can then investigate it and take a look at it. So we'll leave this as enable here. So it's gonna be showing open circuit on any of these that have been enabled. Now the last portion here is sensor calibration. Right now it's set to default. And that means it's gonna be running the default calibration scale for this particular thermocouple K-type. Now if I go here to my dropdown, we have user settings. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.